Welcome to another episode of Prospecting on Purpose. Today, we're going to discuss three habits to make you a rock star salesperson. You're listening to Prospecting on Purpose, where we discuss all things prospecting, sales, business, and mindset. I'm your host, Sarah Murray, a sales champion who's here to show you that you can be a shark in business and still lead with intentionality and authenticity. Tune in each week as we dive into methods to connect with clients, communicate with confidence, and close the deal. My career has consisted predominantly of sales roles. And in my experience, I have come to realize that salespeople or any type of customer-facing role almost always fall into one of two buckets. In bucket one, we find our rock stars. They're the top performers. They're competitive. But this competition applies not only to themselves, but competitive for the good of their teammates, the good of their customers, and the good of their companies. These are the people that organizations are striving to hire, keep, retain, and develop. The bucket one people always answer their phone, or if they're in a meeting with a customer, they will promptly call you back. These people know how to listen to the client and ask the right questions to make sure that they understand their needs. If they are asked for something, they'll say yes, or have an all figure it out approach as opposed to just defaulting to a no. No, they'll find an alternate solution. They sell value, experiences, and programs that fit their client's business model. They follow up. They do what they say they're going to do. They know how to be pleasantly persistent. They'll roll up their sleeves and do the work, even if it's not always their quote unquote job. Bucket one people ask for and welcome feedback because they know it makes them better and they want to be the best versions of themselves, both personally and professionally. Bucket one salespeople are a pleasure to do business with. Then there are the people who fall into bucket two. Bucket two folks rarely answer their phone. Their voicemail is probably full and not taking any new messages. They don't have their phone number and their email signature. And without the phone number, how are the customers supposed to call them with their money? One quick tell when it comes to the bucket two people is that they say no quickly. No is the default and it's often stemming from laziness and not the actual ability to meet the request. Their presentations are boring. Maybe they're just reading slides or going through the motions. They won't do things that fall outside of their job description. They clock out early. They take their time getting back to people. In a word, the bucket two folks are cruising. And their colleagues can tell because they're probably picking up the slack. And you can bet that their clients can tell too. The clients always suffer. We all know the people in bucket two. Now, there's a surprising and sneaky third bucket that falls somewhere between these two. We'll call it bucket one and a half, or the half buckets. And in all honesty, this is probably where most of us live a lot of the time. We may think that we're in bucket one, but we may unintentionally be falling closer to bucket two. We answer our phones and spin activities with a lot of energy, but there's a disconnect between our actions, the client's results, and how well we are actually running the sale. We may be great at building rapport or have an excellent knowledge base of our product, but we don't have a structured plan or an outcome in mind when we're going into a meeting. We let our customers lead us and we spend most of the meeting regurgitating product facts or answering questions instead of driving our own business needs forward. The half buckets default to the easiest product offering and use the path of least resistance to get the sale. That doesn't mean that we don't get the sale. We probably do but it usually means that we're leaving a lot of money on the table and most likely doing our customer or our client a disservice too. Half buckets don't know how to ask the right questions and listen to our clients, which results in unintentional misses for potential new business. We don't like to ask for or receive feedback. Bucket one and a half is deadly. It's where our wheels are spinning and we think we're doing the right things, but we're not getting consistent and predictable results. It's where we have to ask ourselves if the results we are getting out of our efforts really match our confidence going in. So how can we be better? What can you as a salesperson do where bucket one is your normal operating state and every once in a while you slip into this half bucket category? Now, if I haven't been clear already, we all fall into each of these buckets throughout different parts of our careers or even specific areas of our jobs. There's nuances to these examples. 
Perhaps you intentionally have to leave your phone number off your email signature for one reason or another. Maybe the product or service you're selling is extremely niche and you have to say no often just as the nature of your sales process. Maybe you're a rock star usually, but your department lost teammates and you're picking up additional responsibilities and your response time just has to be slower because you're juggling more tasks. I get it. These are examples to get you thinking of what type of salesperson you are and what type of salesperson do you want to be? Or where do you need to find support to make sure you stay closer to bucket one consistently? We're going to get into three easy changes that we can make to stay closer to bucket one. But first, I want to discuss two core baselines. This is what you are always doing as just part of your salesperson DNA. Okay, so the first baseline is self-awareness. You're only going to be able to improve and stay on top of your game if you're consistently reflecting, evaluating, and pivoting to improve. So I'm going to challenge you to think about areas in your role or in the sales process where you slip and fall into the half bucket. The second baseline is confidence. Bucket one people are confident as an overall foundation. Confidence in yourself, in your product, and your industry knowledge. Confidence in your ability to provide value to your clients because you're bucket one. You're a rock star. So now, with those two baselines, we're going to discuss three easy changes you can make to your daily routine to move from a 1.5 to a 1. The first change, or the first habit, is you need to always be asking questions. Ask questions and listen. Prep work is important because it's going to give you that baseline of confidence going into a meeting. But the way that the business exchange is going to drive forward is by making sure that you are on the same page as your client. And you cannot do that without asking questions. We assume that if we ask questions, it means that we may be perceived as not doing the prep work. But I promise you, your clients are going to appreciate it. You're going to get more out of your meeting and the relationship is going to deepen. So let's get into an example. I'm going to use an architecture firm as an example. You've set up this meeting, maybe it's a lunch presentation to this firm. In your prep work, you look at their website and all of their projects listed on their website are all beautiful hospital projects. So you tweak your presentation and your pitch to be all of the selling messages and products that work for a hospital. You set up for the presentation with their team and you introduce yourself and then you just go into the hour presentation. The whole hour, you're talking at them about hospital solutions. They're smiling and nodding along because they have nice manners and you bought them lunch, but they are not engaged and they're not listening because guess what? Maybe at that time, they don't have any hospital projects. They have four residential projects and two hotels. But you wasted everyone's time and lunch hour talking about hospitals because you didn't ask any questions. You had the confidence. You knew what you were talking about. But the lack of questions led to a meeting where you were spinning your wheels, wasting time, which doesn't serve you or your client. A lot of us know this, but I want this to serve as a reminder that asking the right questions is going to put you in the driver's seat because you have more information directly from the source, your client, that's going to progress you forward. This same concept of asking questions also applies to when you are being asked questions. So it applies for when you're answering questions. You need to ask questions to efficiently answer questions. If a client asks you a question, dig deeper and try to identify the reasoning behind their question. Often it's not black and white. There's usually subtext to a question and it may lead you to an opportunity to showcase your expertise or capture additional information that leads to revenue or other ways that you can be of service to your customer. Okay, so for the second habit, I want you to admit when you don't know something. I think people really struggle with this. There is so much power in showing your vulnerability and it's not even really vulnerability. It's just, it's just honesty. And when you're honest with your client, it builds trust. I see a lot of salespeople who love the phrase, you know, quote, fake it till you make it, unquote. But it is okay that you don't know something about your client's business. It would be weird if you knew everything about their business. It's their business. It's okay that you don't, and that's where asking questions comes in as an area of expertise. Fake it till you make it is important for the confidence baseline, of course, but there's power in admitting when you don't know something. I've never once lost a sale because I didn't have an answer to something. It's easy to pivot, 
You know, what a great question. I don't think I've ever been asked that question. Can I clarify what you're asking? Right? We're understanding where their question's coming from. We are listening to their answer. And then it's super easy to pivot to a, I'm not sure. Let me find out and get back to you. Then this gives you the opportunity to follow up, to reach back out, to prove that you'll do what you say you're going to do. There's a lot of power in just admitting that you don't know something and asking questions. So for the third habit, a little bit different, but really you need to find support in the areas where you slip. So these areas of our roles where we slip into this half bucket category, find ways of support. Hate checking your voicemail? Maybe you can change your voicemail to say, hey, thanks for calling. The fastest way to get a response from me is text or email me at XYZ. Do you hate logging your mileage or inputting data in Salesforce? Can you use an app? Can you hire a virtual assistant? There's a lot of resources out there. And if you ask for help, ask your peers, understand how other people are running the areas of the business that you hate, maybe you'll be able to find a creative idea you hadn't thought of yet. So a few things that help me in terms of getting support. One is I actually create rules for myself. Little rules of areas where I find problems. I used to always lose my parking ticket going in and out of various parking garages. Okay, rule, grab the ticket, put it in the same spot in my wallet every time, even if it takes 10 seconds longer. I found that if I was talking on the phone while I was packing up my bag or my car for the day, I would almost always forget something. So one day I'm packing up my car, I'm on the phone, I get into my car, I switch to Bluetooth, and apparently I forgot to close the trunk of my car, which was an SUV, so I backed out of my garage with the trunk open and I crashed into my own garage. And so now there's a rule. (laughs) I'll tell people I'll call them back in 10 minutes. I pack my stuff focused and efficiently, I don't forget anything for the day, I pack up my car, I safely exit my garage, and then I call them I call them back when I'm settled and on the road. Hands-free, of course, but it's extremely more efficient. So don't wait until you crash your car. Make those rules now for yourself. Another trick that works for me is I create little rewards for myself, little treats. Uh, If I really want to go to a 6 p.m. yoga class, well, first I got to finish my Salesforce entries and yoga is my reward. Or if I'm going to have a glass of wine or read a magazine, or take a walk with my dog, or listen to the latest episode of Prospecting on Purpose. Holla! This gives a deadline to focus and work more efficiently, and it shifts the mindset. So now, instead of doing a task that I hate, this is just a quick errand or task I have to finish before I get my glass of wine. One last little trick that's been helping me in this support category when it comes to productivity and We'll talk more about productivity habits in other episodes, but this one's been helpful for me when it comes to things I'm procrastinating, and it's called the Pomodoro Method. If you haven't heard of it, it's a time management method based on 25-minute stretches of really focused work. So your phone is on Do Not Disturb. It's put away. Your desk is clean. I put on Spotify, a binaural beats is what it's called, just kind of focuses your energy there. You work for 25 minutes at a time. You take a five minute break. Easy. If I can silence my phone for 30 minutes, eliminate all that multitasking and focus on this one thing, I knock out so much more stuff. Same concept as packing up the car while you're on the phone, right? That 10 minutes of focus, make sure that I'm properly prepared for my day so my meetings are efficient and then I can be present for my phone call. So it serves me, colleagues, and clients better with that dedicated focus. So to recap, we have our two baselines of constant self-awareness and confidence. And those two elements are just part of our everyday DNA. And that gives us the grace to really explore these other habits. So habit one, making sure you're asking questions always. Habit two, be comfortable in that I don't know space. You know, let your ego take a rest and give yourself permission to accept help or admit that you don't know it all. And finally, number three, find support and give yourself little treats. I know that we all have the ability to be amazing, 
bucket one, rock star, champion, warrior salespeople, whichever word you got to use to hype yourself up. Uh, if this episode resonated with you or if you got something out of it, please share it with others and rate it and review it wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to the Prospecting on Purpose podcast. If you loved what you heard today, subscribe to the podcast and please rate and leave a review. For more info on me or if you'd like to work together, feel free to go to my website, sarahmurray.com. On social media, I'm usually hanging out at Sarah Murray Sales. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.